And we're back to the mix show. 941-745-1490. 888-761-1490. And don't forget, you can watch us live on Ustream.tv. When you go to Ustream.tv, just type in the mix show cam. And you'll be able to hear us and see us live in the studio. I do have my next guest on the phone. Silky, are you there? Uh, yeah, we are here. I'm here with um, all of the members of the band, with the exception of the drummer. Hello. Hi. H- Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, what are we on conference call with these guys? Uh, well, no, they're no, they're right next to me. They're in the room next to me. All right. Yeah. Well, listen, I've been around. I've been playing your your tunes on my show for the past uh, I don't know month ever since you started sending me uh, the MP3s. So oh, uh, good. let me play a little snippet of my favorite here. Do, 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 do. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. This is, this is one of my favorite tunes. Hang on. I can't wait to which one it is. It's exciting. Yes, I'm a disco Nazi. That's what I'm talking about. There you go. I know. I love that song. That's my favorite one. I like it, too. Yeah, it's a great tune. Uh, Let me uh, go ahead and give everybody a briefing here. Silky Berlin has worked with uh, people such as Cheetah Chrome, uh, and you say, of course, in a manner of speaking. uh, Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Uh, Didi Ramon, Jerry Nolan, Frank Infante, and Clarence Clemens, just to name a few. Uh, I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. Hey, are you originally from New York? I'm, I'm sorry. Are you from New York? Um, well, I, I guess sort of. Yeah, I, I mean, I spent I spent a lot of time there. I, I started out in San Francisco with uh, the guy that started Meet Deville. When I was about 15, I uh, left home and came to California from the East Coast. And then he tried to kill me after we were in the band for about a year and a half, so uh, I had to go to New York. So I actually spent... Oh wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on, hold on, back up. Wait, you're you're 15. You leave home. You go to the West Coast, and you hook up. You hook up with the the leader of Mink Deville. Yeah, his name was um, his name was Robbie McKenzie, and he changed his name to Fast Floyd because I think he had uh, arrest warrants or something. And he and Willie had grown up together in Stamford, Connecticut, and um, so they started. Uh, Floyd brought Willie out. To California, and they started Mink Deville, and then Willie sort of, you know, a little like sort of screwed the band and got rid of uh, Ruben and everybody. But look at what he tried was, to kill you. Well, yeah, he, he was a little psychotic. I was, uh, <laughs> I didn't have the best judgment when I was about 15 or 16, as you might imagine. I'm not sure it's, it's a little better now, I don't know how much better, but it's uh, no one's tried to slice my face up with a razor lately, oh. or you know. Locked me in a room, basement apartment with two guns, so I'm doing a little better. You're doing a little bit better. Okay. All right. Um, all right. When when were you in New York? What years were you there? Uh, I was there in the early 80s. Like, maybe, I don't know. I'm not very good with dates, but, you know, like 80, I don't know, early 80s, pretty much, I'd say. A little, maybe a little bit of 79. Oh, okay. All right. No, I was just wondering. I, think we made the record, I made the record with the Blondie guys. I think it was in '82. I think that record came out then. Okay, no, I, I was I was just curious if uh, you know you and I had slept together. That's all. Yeah. Um, well, I slept with everybody else. I don't know how I could have missed you. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I was doing so many drugs. I was doing a lot of heroin, and um, to be really honest with you, when you had a boyfriend back there, then um, the the Part of the rock and roll was really about shooting drugs. It was not, I mean, nobody was like, except Johnny Thunders, who screwed anything that walked. Uh, 
most of the other guys really weren't that interested in sex. It was, it was, if they were with a girl, it was about, you know, the drug was, uh, that, that was not part of it. I mean, it's a kind of a strange dynamic, but it is actually the way it works. Um, heroin doesn't make you extremely amorous. I mean, you like to be with people you like, but it, it's not exactly an aphrodisiac. You know what I mean? Oh, jeez. Well, how long, well, how long were you on heroin? Um, probably about 10 years. But I didn't get addicted to it. It's a really strange story. I, I think I've only met one other person like me. I, uh, quickly, our, our guitar player, uh, Keith Daldanis, who uh, was with the Dolls and uh, David Bowie, and he has a lot of different names. But Keith, I watched him. He had a girlfriend that was a heroin dealer. And I watched him as he got up to, you know, doing about 10 bags at a time. And, you know, he wasn't getting high anymore. And I thought, well, gosh, this is pretty stupid. Like, he's, you know, it's costing all this money. And, He's not getting high. It seems kind of dumb. So I thought, I think I'm going to stop every three days or four days so that I don't build up a tolerance. And I'm not really the criminal type, so I didn't want to, you know, be robbing people or anything. Although, my, you know, people always bought me drugs. But So I stopped every three or four days for a day or two, and, and then I would probably drink a little bit or take some kind of pills to sort of ease me off it. And I, I never actually got physically addicted to it. Although I did have a psychotic break. When I stopped after 10 years, and that, that's why I had to stop singing for a little while. So I went pretty crazy. I was currently for two years. Okay, so you weren't hanging out at the methadone clinic? Oh, no, no, no. I never did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Never did that. No, and I don't do drugs or anything like that anymore. Well, what, for... what was your association with uh, Nancy Spungen? Um, I worked with Nancy uh, for a short time. I was uh, like a topless go-go dancer in New York when I first got there before we had a manager who then like took over all the financial responsibilities. And Nancy and I uh, worked at the Baby Doll Lounge on Canal Street for a little while. And uh, she used to come over to my house and bug me for drugs and stuff. And she was sort of a, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't want to say too much bad about a dead person, but um, it's not hard to believe why somebody could have gotten pretty pissed off at her. <laughs> so you, you yeah, know? it's okay. So she was a yeah, she was a, a bitch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she came over one night to my house, and I had this um, girl named Tamara who used to wear a Bobby Mac, and she worked there too. She was a cute little half Japanese, tiny little thing. She had some drugs and. Nancy pushed her way over to my apartment. I was living across from the Irving Hotel at the time uh, on near Lexington. And, and Nancy insisted on coming over. And then Tamara said she didn't have enough drugs for Nancy. And Nancy was trying to strangle her. And, you know, I mean, she was just, she was just a nut. Yeah. And, um, you know, she just wasn't really very nice. And I'm mean, sure she had her problems, you know, as we all did. But she was uh, pretty aggressive. And she was troubled. You know, she was very troubled. And I was pretty troubled. For me to say somebody was troubled was, I mean, I got along with people. Nancy, Nancy fought with everybody. Mm. Uh, it was, I, I don't even, I guess she must have bought Sid drugs because I can't imagine why he would have been with her. He was a pretty quiet guy. Um, but, you know, he was shooting heroin with his mother when he was 14. So, you know, he had a problem with <laughs> so. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sid always seemed but, like, a, like a pretty mellow kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, everything was a lot different then. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think I knew any cool band in New York at the time where everybody wasn't doing heroin. Everybody was doing it. Everybody, and I mean everybody. I don't want to start, you know, slandering people or anything. But you name the band, and they were all shooting heroin. All of them. All of them. Uh, did you buy your uh, heroin from Rockets? From who? Rockets Red Glare. No, it was that. Okay. No, he was a guy from the from the village, East Village. Um, he was he did everything he could to make a buck and borrow money, and uh, he was pretty much a tragic figure. Uh, he actually Rockets is the guy who uh, I believe sold Sid and Nancy their their last bag. Really? Yeah, and when he went I... to go check on them, uh, that's when he saw Nancy uh, dead on the uh, bathroom floor, and Sid was sitting on the uh, the bed murmuring something and he just he just got the hell out of there uh, now there was a girl named yvonne that was uh kind of running around in our crowd and uh she was uh johnny's dealer and uh 
it was a funny story about her. She she one night at Max's cornered me, and I had an apartment on Ninth between Avenue A and First. And uh, she said I was it was like ideally located, I guess, for the uh, you know uh, drug distribution trade. Yeah. It was a, a, right near Tompkins Square Park, and she said, "I have a proposition for you. I'll give you all the drugs that you want." if you let me share your apartment. And um, it took me about one second to decide that the answer to that was no. I didn't want to be living with a drug distributor. And, I mean, I just wasn't a criminal type, you know. Um, and I said no, that I didn't want to do that. And the next day, uh, every mirror in my apartment was turned around. It had been broken into. It was turned upside down. And um, I think, you know, I don't know who she was associated with, but I'm, you know, quite sure that it was she who, who did that. And uh, then about, uh, I left, and I went and stayed with this French guy over in Chelsea, the Chelsea Hotel. And um, I came back two days later, and the apartment um, had, there, there had been a fire in it. And uh, that's when I uh, really, you know, I was already having paranoid delusions and, uh, that's when I left New York. Was after that happened. It was just, uh, you know, it was just. I mean, it was just too crazy. But no, it, yeah. But, but bring up stuff. You know, she was like the Domino's pizza of heroin home delivery. You know, she she serviced up uh, our crowd. The Johnny, you know, Jerry Nolan and all those guys. Jerry and I were went out together for quite a while. And he's a really good friend of mine. Well, yeah, yeah I, I lived on St. Mark's and First, so, uh, yeah, I was right in the middle of all that, and I had to see all that going on, too, so, you know. I see, you know, fashion vlogs, all and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew, all, I knew all that stuff going on, and uh, I probably hung out in the same clubs as you as well, if they were still around, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't remember a lot. I... I I mean, I, I had, I, you know, I've written a book. It's called Queen of the Underground, and that's a memoir. It's not published yet, but it's a pretty good book. It's pretty funny because I don't really take any of this stuff too seriously. But, um, I mean, it happened, and, like, you know, I'm not sorry about any of it. I had, you know, it was an experience. But um, I don't, I had to, like, call people and ask them, like, what was I like and what did I do? And, you know, and sometimes it would jog my memory a little bit. Um, but... Uh, I have really, you know, my memories are sort of like, I mean, they don't roll along like um, a, a, a reel in a film. They're they're more like I get snatches of sort of black and white snapshots of certain incidents um, from back then. But it's uh, a lot of it is really a blur, uh, unfortunately. But but I've reconstructed enough of it that the book is still, you know, it's still fun to read. I think. Well, when's the book coming out? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a good beggar. I don't like begging people to be my agent. I'm just not. I'm not a good kiss, kiss ass. I never have been. So I'm waiting for somebody to come to me. I did a reading the other night in San Francisco at the Live Worms Gallery, and people seemed to like it. And we enacted it. And we're thinking of. We do a lot of video. I don't know if you've been on our Facebook page, but in 40 days we have over 10,000 fans. Awesome. So we've been doing a lot. Yeah, I know it's amazing. We do a lot with video and multimedia, myself and the band, and we're thinking of um, sort of trying to film a book. And uh, I'm thinking that if the music gets out there, that somebody will come to me about the book. But to go around and, like, knock on a bunch of agents' doors and, and all that kind of stuff, I, it's just not my personality. No, I mean, I'm, no, but you, you also have to, have to understand that there's a lot of, uh, with the Internet now, um, a lot of people are doing self-publishing, uh, where you can publish it yourself, and uh, you know instead of taking a, a percentage, you you would take a hundred percent of the sales of the book. You know, I mean, I've got some information on that I can forward to you, and, you know, and, and discuss with you as far as publishing the book yourself instead of, you know, getting ripped off by a by a major publisher. Well, but you know, I've, I've heard that that's not. Wait, my phone's not plugged in. Wait, I, I've heard that they, you have to do all this promotion yourself. Oh, here, I, oh, thank goodness, I didn't disconnect you. Um, you know, it's just, it's the whole, I really think if it's a good enough book, actually, I'm a, I'm a pretty good writer. Um, after I had, like, the psychotic break, I, I mean, I have written professional. I've had a lot of things published. So it's, and, you know, they were not all memoirs about being, taking drugs. Um, I've written a lot of political essays. I was put in jail for political activism for some of the things I wrote, you know, stuff like that in the interim between then and now. 
and um, but I'm not a novice writer. It's it's a good book, and um, I did go back to college after and got a degree in English literature after my uh, you know somewhat aborted being career. So it is a good book. I, I I'm a voracious reader, and um, I know it's a good book. So I feel that if it's good enough, really, and I'm not completely um, delusional, that someone will come to me eventually and they'll want to publish it. I have talked to Kirby Kim at Endeavor. He did call me one time. I sent him part of it. Uh, he's a top agent in New York. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I'm, you know, I sort of, we're, like, I don't, I'm not really ambitious particularly exactly. Like, I don't really need the fame from having the book. It's, I just sort of let things kind of roll, you know, and a lot of things have come to me in my life, and, and I think that's, that, that's how it will work. I don't want to push too hard, and um, that's just sort of how I am, you know. No. I've, I've been saying no, I and no, a, no, I get I get what you're saying, but you know, I mean, it's not a question of fame. It's just a question of getting the book out there and getting it people to to buy it and read it and uh, and enjoy it. You know, it's it's a way of it's a form of communication. Yeah, well, I, 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 okay, well, you can send me this stuff. I'll, I'll entertain it. Maybe, no, you maybe, won't. Maybe. No, you won't. I, I will. I you're will. BSing I will. me. Come on, you're blowing smoke up my ass. But that's know, okay. That, but that's okay. That's why we like you. No, I'll give it to my guitar player. He'll, he'll read all the details. He'll tell me what it says. <laughs> maybe, we'll some, maybe there will be some adventure, some um, uh, agent uh, listening to your show tonight, and they will say, oh, it must have Queen of the Underground. I must have that book. But, well, hey, you know, I, I'm, I take all of my interviews, you know, and, and this, in this case, yours, and I edit those, and I put them on YouTube, and I put them on your Facebook page, and, you know, so other people will be clicking on it and listening to it, and who knows, maybe, uh, you know, an agent uh, will uh, take an interest in it, you know. Well, you know, I actually, I actually really, like, this thing with Facebook has been so amazing. I mean, we just put this page up January 10th, I and mean, I don't know that much about Facebook. I was never on Facebook until like maybe two months ago. So I'm, I'm very much an acolyte at this. Uh, but um, Eric, our guitarist, uh, Eric, is it, what are you calling yourself these days? Zodic. Zodic, okay. Uh, Eric is sort of a, uh, an habitué of Facebook, and, he taught, and he's like all over this thing about these 10,000 fans, and I said, well, I don't know, doesn't everybody get that? Mm -hmm. He looked at me like, like I was out of my mind. He said, no, nobody does. Like, look at all these other bands that have been around for five or ten years, they have, like, you know, 300 fans. Right. And we have, like, I think we had 10,500 tonight, right? Like, like 10, yeah, whatever it is, yeah. followers, whatever they are. Uh, I mean, we're, I don't mean to diminish what they are. I mean, I'm really glad people like music or what we're doing. But we do post a lot of video and a lot of uh, audio stuff. And some, I mean, is that a lot of people? I mean, I don't know. I don't uh, you know. It's a think. lot of people. Yeah, that's a lot of people, especially, fast. you know, yeah, for in such a short Super amount of time. Fast. Yeah. No, oh, so what if I, I mean, I don't, like. So you're doing well. So, well, I mean, we're doing well there, and it's sort of, it's sort of um, giving me a little pause because, um, you know, the sort of the live music scene, at least in San Francisco, is a little, what would you say? It's a little. It's a little thin, you know, it's a little dilute. And um, it's not, um, you know, I didn't sing for about about 15 years. I mean, I, I did a little bit, but not with sort of the intensity or the intent that we're doing this now. And, I mean, it's mostly writing. And um, uh, the scene, just in that short amount of time, is entirely, entirely different from what it was, you know, particularly, you know, sort of in my heyday of, um, performing in New York and stuff, and um, you know, I I am always ask people the same question: Who are the top three drawing bands in San Francisco? And I invariably get the same answer: I don't know. There is no band locally that really draws that well. Mm -hmm. And we're in Oakland, and it's the same thing over here. So we've done well at the gigs we've played. Um, we do a lot of promotion with posters and things like that, but I also talked to Danny O'Brien from the Avengers. He was a drummer, and he's living in Sweden because we were thinking of moving to Europe. We, we thought about that, that maybe, you know, things were a little bit more fertile over there. And so I, I talked with Danny about a week ago, and he said, don't come to Europe. He said, it's better in the States, and he said, I'm trying to get out of Sweden. 
So apparently this is a, a rather um, international situation. I don't know about in, in Asia, but I should say, you know, uh, Western Europe and, and the U.S. because um, our former manager who managed Blondie um, was her first manager. He said the same thing is going on in New York. So um, it's sort of a conundrum, you know, what, what exactly is the right way to address the music situation these days. And having seen the success that we've been having on uh, Facebook and YouTube and all these things, I'm starting to think that it's really content-driven and that it's about using the media on the Internet to engage people. And maybe the way you make money these days is to get people to advertise on your Facebook page or um, and I don't really care about money, but you know, guys in the band do, so I have to sort of um, adhere to some of their, um, you know, what well, I don't know. I have to be, you know, enjoy that. Well, you got to eat. <clears throat> I, 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 have to, I, I can't just think about myself. I'm just like not. I just don't really like money. I'm sure your bandmates like money. Yeah, I mean, you got to eat. Yeah, well, that's, we don't eat. Though. They don't eat. Yeah. We don't eat. We're all really. We're all really skinny. Yeah. We're all really skinny. <laughs> no, but. I think so that, no, you. I think since we started this band, we've all got even skinnier yeah. too. I think we're all like really. I think we're all fitter. Right. Well, yeah, but the business the, the business model has changed from our day when you when you and I were younger. There, you know, we're not putting out vinyl anymore. We're not trying to get a distributor for the vinyl to get it into a record shop. Uh, you know, it's all digital. You you know, uh, Silky Berlin and the Addictions. You 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 record your music. And you upload it to iTunes, and uh, people buy it there. And they download it, yep. and they'll, they'll pay you 99 cents. Well, wait, I know. It's all, so what about the club scene, though? I mean, is that <laughs> is it important to play out, or is that just, I mean, it's particular. like, I mean, I guess if you're playing Madison Square Garden, yeah, that would be a good thing to do. But, uh, I mean, how important is it to, like, um, I mean, I'm asking this really as a question to you as to, I'm um, sure, is more of an expert on this than I am. Um, well, I mean, it seems as if, sort of the local club venues are almost an apostrophe to the whole kind of um, internet thing. Um, they're tiny venues here. I mean, most of them are, um, I mean, we had about 100 people at a place called Eli's Mile High Club the other night on Saturday. And that was, up to their standards, that was packed. Mm. And we did a lot of promotion to get people there. And... Um, most of the times when I've gone there, the owner told me they have, you know, maybe on a weekend night they made up 30 people. We had 100, and I'm sure he was quite pleased because he sold drinks. But um, it, it, it seems it, it, it's, um, I, I don't know, it's very confusing to me. Well, I, 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 iTunes and these other sites that where you upload your music and you sell it there, those are your new record stores, okay? There's no more vinyl. There's no more cassettes. That's where you, that's where you sell your music. Uh, you're basically cutting out the middleman because there's no distributor. So you record it, you put it up there, and you collect the money. Uh, and as far as the Internet, your Facebook, if you've got 10,000 people watching you, uh, that's your flyer. Back in the day, you and I used to go around hanging up flyers uh, for our gigs, letting people know what club we were going to be at on, and on what day. You know, I mean, you're, you're familiar with the old punk rock flyers. So yeah. I mean, so that Facebook is the and the internet and a website is the new punk rock flyer. It's it's how you do it. It's all digitized, and uh, it's more personal because you know you can communicate directly with these people. And um, if playing out is that important, then you you would network with these people, and uh, find clubs and uh, you know and and create a tour. So uh, it's it's the same thing only different. You know, it's just all digitized now. See, the thing that I find interesting about it, like, I always sort of try to look at the um, upside of things. And me, what I like about the way it is now is that um, while you don't have the distribution, you are much more in control of your content. Uh, you're much more in control of if you want to have a certain, um, you know, convey a certain personality that your band has. You're not sort of at the hands of some impersonal you know, uh, record company executive, you can pretty much, uh, it's much more, cre it, it's much more personally creative. If you like that aspect of the business, um, which I do, um, you have, you could be a lot more creative with your image and how you market your music and how you 
what kind of music you you like to put out. Um, we might not have been allowed to put out disco Nazi. I mean, that's very possible. Um, and, um, you know, people told me to change the name. I said, you know, Keith wrote the song. I'm not changing the name. I, I mean, I'm not doing that. So, and, you know, we're pretty much in control of all that now. And I like that. Um, it's, it's really the playing out live thing that is the most confusing. I like all the Internet stuff. I, I do like that. And yeah. we're these guys in the band are all really smart. There's not a dumb one, dumb one amongst them. And uh, they all like doing different things. Uh, Matt knows how to do Pro Tools, and he knows how to do, like, the, what's all the, um, the Final Cut. He does Final Cut, and Eric's really an expert with all this Facebook stuff. And um, I don't know what I do. I probably just don't do, any, don't do enough, probably, maybe. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, they think I, they say I do enough. Okay, they're not firing me. You gotta learn. But yeah, no, I am. I am, and it's it's sort of, um, you know, I, I find it sort of intriguing to uh, kind of attack this new um, business model. Um, it is kind of interesting, and and it's also if you're kind of industrious and you have other members of the band that are industrious, you can work as hard as you want. You're not just going out at night and playing a gig. I mean, you can spend all day editing video. We have so many videos up. We put a video up every day. Right. We well, I know. Video. Yeah. You tag me in those, so I go and watch them. Or just reposted yeah. about three of them. Yeah. Did, did you did you look at did you? I'm sorry. Did you watch them? You watch them. You watch them. Good. Yeah, because yeah, I log on to Facebook, and again, you know, you're it, it's it's you're you're getting your content out there. It'll say Silky Berlin uh, tagged uh, Sick Mick in a video, and I I bring it up, and boom, there it is, and I watch it, and I check it out, and see what's going on. Yeah, and so we we see what I, what I realized in the beginning when I looked around at these other band sites and things was I thought you know if you don't put new things up. Uh, you know, all the time, why are people going to keep coming back? Well, the answer is they're not. The other thing, um, we're working with a uh, fellow named Ace, and he is um, with this company, Reality Check TV, who um, they they got a hold of me when I first got here in September, and I paid, played the, fun, the punk festival, which was the first punk thing I had done in, you know, probably 15 years. And Ace is now sort of halfway managing us, but he was over here at the Lost in Oakland the other night after the gig, and, you know, I always ask people I think are smarter than I am, like, what's going on? And he said, Silky, it's content. You have to keep writing songs. It's about the songs, the songs, the songs. And I see now where he was going with that. And we have been really pretty assiduously writing songs. We just wrote one today called DNA Lounge. And it goes, well, let's see, where is it? We're not even finished. It's a, like, fucking cool song. Oh, well, hey, 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 oh, oh, oh. Sorry, it's a really, mm. it's a silly it's a really, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It was it's a really cool. It goes. It goes. Last. It goes. Last night we went to dance at the DNA lounge. The lights were blue, and overhead the walls were the color of a green leather skin. We saw the star of church and Derek Demolition in the corner on the couch. They had the latest street grade ecstasy and stopped her dressing bottle with coming out of her head. And yes, she was. That's what's going to happen to me. He said, no, no, no. With the amphetamine junkies, fly through the halls in the front, the jacket melting in a wall. Standing there looking like a piece of live face, surrounded by zombies, they were lying in wait. I said, no, 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 no. Not gonna happen this, no, 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 no. No, 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 not going to happen this time. Right on. Good. And there she was. Hey. It was a latex vampire, cyber thread, 
dancing on the stage with the other living dead. Make that grandpa a sob of stress. Twisting on the stage with the other living dead. I said, no, 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 no. Ain't gonna happen this time. No, 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 no. Boom. Anyway, he just started that. It's not anywhere near finished. We just wrote that today. And we're going to, like, I, mean, I think it's going to be a really, really good one. And then we have another one that's called Silicon Valley. Well, but we're, almost, <laughs> we're almost off the air, so i got to wrap it up. But, oh, okay, well, like, you know, that's just sort of what we're doing. We're just, like, kind of hanging out, writing songs and putting stuff up on Facebook, and, and we're really, you know, we'd love to play, I mean, Eric um, sent us something about playing in Tampa. If you guys find us, you know, five or six gigs down there in that surrounding area, we'll come down and play. Okay, yeah, we, well, we know people who, who, who do a lot of bookings yeah. and everything. Yeah, we don't know anybody down there, but uh, certainly you know if you have us. Audience, yeah, you know uh, us. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, I mean, as long as we have the gig, we don't know, I mean, I don't know any of the clubs, and, you know, I, I don't feel, I don't feel, uh, you know, it'd be too hard for me to book gigs there, but if you know, we'll play any spot with a decent band or we can get an audience. And if you, if you're inclined to uh, find us some gigs down there, we'll come down. We'll come out there for for a few weeks or something. Why not? Silky, Where's... silky, silky. I consider us friends, even though yeah. even though we may or may not have slept together in the eighties. Well, she wouldn't remember like anyways. Said, Hey, we, we see a lot of heroin because if you weren't, we probably didn't. No, so no, yeah, I see. I, I, I'm clean. I never did straight any of that edge. stuff. So I'm, I'm, a, yeah, I'm straight edge. I was always into straight edge punk. So, uh, you know. That's a really exciting news. I got a tattoo yesterday. I got a tattoo. I didn't have one before. Okay, we'll take a picture of it. Post it on Facebook. Tag yeah. me on it, please. Oh, okay. And uh, right, well, and listen, I'm going to look into uh, digital publishing for you, even though you 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 don't give a rat's ass about it. I'm still going to do that. Uh, I'm also I, <laughs> I'm also going to look around and talk to promoters and uh, see what's going on in the clubs down here. So to see if we can get you down to Florida and hang out, and uh, you know enjoy the beaches uh, during the day and uh, go uh, you know do some disco Nazi stuff at night. We, you know, we really that sounds really exciting. I mean, we we'll, we really will come. So, uh, I mean, Jill, Jill Hoffman's down there, too. She's in Sarasota, and Jill's one of my oldest friends. We actually went to New York together, and she went to work at Virgin, and I'd love to see Jill. And, um, uh, you know, she's one of my oldest friends in the music business, and I see her, I saw her in September, and she plays uh, our records sometimes. And um, Joe Reese from Target, you know, he, he that song Fantasy is doing really well. Yeah, Fantasy okay. Is- I, yep, I, I know Jill as well, and uh, so apparently we, 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 know among, we know the same people, so let me go ahead and get to work on it. Um, right. You know, you get more MP3s, send them to me, I'll play them on the show, and, uh, right. you know, I want to have you call back in on the show. Okay, well, I hope, I didn't, I hope, we, were, I hope we weren't boring. No, 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 no. no, no. In fact, we didn't have, we, we didn't have enough intrigued. time. We didn't have enough time, and we, you know. We want you back. Yeah, we want you back, and we were only scratching the surface, so, uh, you know. That, that's probably. I think that's probably true. Yeah. I, I got I a question for you. <laughs> yes. What um. What What is your uh, guarantee for gigs? To get you down here. What you that? Oh, you know, I don't know. We, you know, I, I, I don't know. We just want to play. You know, well, we have um a little bit of funding from uh, some people who like us. I mean, it's not a lot. We can't. You know. But you know, we'd rather just we'd rather play good venues with good bands so that people see the band and get all nuts about you know the money. I mean, as much as we can get. But what do you what do you say, Matt? Yeah, we'd like to get good out of it. That's more important than money to us. I um, gotcha. We'll you know, we just want to get good juju and good vibes. Right, the old punk rock aesthetic. So uh, we, you know, Silky Berlin. Uh, you can find her on Facebook, Silky Berlin and the Addictions. You can also find that page on Facebook. Uh, we encourage you to go there and check out the videos and listen to the tunes. And, 
Disco Nazi. This is my all-time favorite right here. Yes, I'm a disco Nazi. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the mix show. Uh, Silky, again, we need to have you on again in the future. Yes, I'm a disco Nazi. Are you there? Yep. Okay. Okay, listen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to wrap up the show, and uh, we'll talk to you again on Facebook, and we'll have you on the, the show again in the future. Thanks for calling in. Cool. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks.